All right, so let's scoot down here to this house, and I'm going to show you some photos. Luckily, it's shady here. So because it's shady, and you can see that people have written like Elvis, carved Elvis into here, Tina loves Elvis. They're saying that things like that carving may even have been original. That one that says Elvis right there, carved in the brick. But I'm gonna show you some of these photos. Y'all seen this house before? I'm sure you've seen the pictures. There's Elvis with the rolls, or with studs. I think his first studs was delivered here. It's Priscilla. That's Elvis on the motorcycle. Priscilla walking up the driveway. Come on. And you can see it's changed slightly, but it hadn't changed much. Here's Elvis at the gate. There's pictures of Elvis like right here. Yeah, that's him peering through the gate. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, holding one of those. Right yeah, there. that guy's an impersonator. We tried to get him, he lives here, and we tried to get him to talk to us. That's him looking through this gate right here. You can see it. And we tried to get him to talk to us on film. That's the cars. All park, you could see that he was standing literally right over there. But he would come out and talk to people. So he bought this uh, in D November 1967, paid 400000 for it. In uh, October of 1970, a Stutz was delivered, I think the first one. The family photo shoot was done here. December 5th, 1970, after Elvis returned after meeting Nixon. The sale of this house was split per their divorce and the house was sold fully furnished. The current interior design showroom, Casa Perfect by appointment only, they own it. That's why there's a CP right here for Casa Perfect. This is an interior design home that they, they show off their designs, the things that they can do. It's a really cool house. And Elvis spent a lot of time here. And you can see like that globe right there is still there. There were globes up on top in some of those photos. And as you can see, those globes are, are gone now. So a lot's changed, but a lot stayed the same. All right, so here's a story for you. This was told to me by Rick, Richard Crofts. He said that, and I think uh, Sandy Miller may have, have even... Uh, it may have been Sandy that told me this story. We'll figure it out. But the story is that Elvis was standing here with a bunch of people. Tour bus pulls up. Says, where's Danny Thomas's house? Elvis says, it's right down there. Which, that's Danny Thomas's house right there. You know, the, the guy that y'all know about from, uh, uh, from, what? Danny Thomas show? No, well, Danny Thomas show, but from Memphis. Yeah, Children's Hospital. The Children's Hospital. What's it called? St. Jude's. St. Boy, I couldn't think of it. So that's Danny Thomas. So they circle down there, and they stop, and they take a bunch of photos. They pull back up, and they stop, and they say, hey, you look like Elvis. And he says, yeah, I get that a lot. And they said, okay. And they drove off. <laughs> <laughs> that happened right here. <laughs> what in the world? That's funny stuff. So here's a little side gate. Locked, of course. But there's a couple of vehicles here.
So I wanted to mention one last thing before we sent the glory up. There's the front door right there. Isn't this place just beautiful? And the gates, you notice, are open. You remember there's a lot of photos of Elvis looking through the gates. But something happened in August of 1969, and that is the murder of Sharon Tate. Shortly after that, the gates were welded shut. You see where the Stutz is coming in. This is in 70. You see that it is covered over and welded. And of course, now they have the gates back open without that metal on it, and I'm glad for that. But there's one thing that is still a remnant of that, and that is the side gate. You see right here, the side gate is clearly still covered with metal. All because of Sharon Tate. That is the reason it was done. So I wanted to take a moment to give a shout out to Sandy Miller, the lady that you see on the right right there. Sandy is responsible for many of the photos that you're seeing. She took photos at many of these houses out here. So thank you so much, Sandy, for capturing these moments in history. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And friends, if you don't know about Sandy, I have a series that I did with her, an interview. Very, very intriguing. Look for the link down in the description area. And the house is still very much like it was when Elvis lived there. In fact, it looks almost identical, and I think it's beautiful. And it was in danger at one time. There was They were going to tear it down in 2013, I believe, and a man bought it. Since we were here filming this, the guy that owned it died, and uh, it has been sold again. So it could theoretically be in danger of being torn down, and I really, really hope not. The view from here, which I didn't look out from here, but you may see it in another video. Trey and I actually went inside this house. That will not be in this video. That will be its own video. We were able to get in. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you check it out. But wow, what a house. I would live there tomorrow. It was just, the view was unbelievable and just an amazing place. Looks very much like it did. Stuck in time. This is the Montevale house. Coming up on Montevale Drive, Montevale. Montevale. That's a Ferrari, that blue car. I think this is Montevale. Yep. All right, so it is 144 Montevale. 135, so it's going to be on your side. Is this the one with the fence? I think so. It's up a hill. Okay. So friends, this right here is Montevale. This is 144. I believe this is 144. Yep, it says 144 right there, or kind of does but this is the house i'm going to see if i can hold this over the gate so you can see out there but this is where elvis lived he bought this house right here and owned it actually for a few years he bought it in 1970 and i think he owned it till 74. let me go back and look but some interesting things happened here this is the house uh, yeah, 70 to 75. This is the house Elizabeth Montgomery from Bewitched grew up in this house. Isn't that funny they're playing Michael Jackson? All right, so we'll get to that. They're playing Michael Jackson music. We're going to get back to that. In fact, they have Michael Jackson shirts and stuff on. So we'll talk about Michael Jackson in just a moment. So this other residence that lived here was Blake Edwards, the Pink Panther director. So let's let's back up a little bit so we can get a little wider shot. The guy that created Redken hair products lived here. A lot of vehicles. They watched the Aloha from Hawaii video here. When it was live on TV, you know, in America, it didn't go live. It was shown a few months later. That was watched at this house by Elvis and everybody. This is where Elvis was living when the divorce was finalized at the courthouse with Priscilla. Um, Jerry Schilling was temporarily living here with Myrna Smith of the Sweet Inspirations. Linda lived here. The White Stutz was delivered here. 
Richard Cole, the manager of Led Zeppelin and John Paul Jones, the bass player, came and visited Elvis here. Elvis admired Richard's watch and Richard gave him his watch and then Elvis went and got some stuff and gave it to those guys, gave them an uh, expensive watch with diamonds and another for John, he went and got that. Elvis sold the house to Telly Savalas in 1975. And something that is interesting right here is you see that this was Elvis's house. Now you remember they were playing Michael Jackson when they came by. Michael Jackson died in that house right there. This is the back edge of it. Michael Jackson died there. Elvis lived here. And this is what it looks like, just a little community. So friends, Elvis lived right over there. You can see that's Montevale and Carrollwood. Right here, another very famous person lived here. But they also died here. And that would be one Michael Jackson. So Elvis lived there. Michael died here. And this is the actual house. There's a side entrance. This place is giant. I'm going to fly the glory over it. But wow, this is a, a large place. So a dead Michael Jackson was removed from this home. Did you see anything? I thought I saw. Tito? <laughs> I'm not going to joke about that. But <laughs> what, you, you didn't think you saw Tito? Well, just to think though, I mean, for Elvis and Michael Jackson in the, in the same yeah. street. Yeah, right really, street. neighbors. Right. Interesting. Different decades, but neighbors nonetheless. So friends, I'm going to send the glory up, but I wanted to confess that the color on this thing, wow, it is horrible. I don't know what I did with my filter, but something weird, but that is the house right there. I really didn't know where it was, so I messed up on this a little bit. This is what the house looked like when Elvis was there. You see that tree to the left of the picture right there. That tree is in front of the house right now, really, really grown up. This is what the house looks like now. It's actually been renovated, so it looks a lot different. Same house, but they've added all that facade and stuff, and you see the tree on this screen to the right. When we go back to the drone shot, you'll see that the right front of the house is impeded by the tree. Same tree that was in all those photos. Now I'm going to turn around so the driveway is directly below us just to the right and I'm going to turn around and show you the house that Michael Jackson passed away in and I don't want to make this a Michael Jackson video but that's the house that he was in when he passed away it was that close. Also right down the street is where Walt Disney lived. He lived on Carrollwood so all of this stuff is really really close together. So we're at the corner of Beverly Glen Boulevard 300 North and Parkwood Drive 300. This little park is called Deneve Square, dedicated to the memory of Felipe Deneve. This was put here in January 1955, so I'm sure Elvis would have seen this. They would come here and play football. It's right around the corner from the Montevale house. Elvis would come right here, friends, and play, throw around the pigskin, if you were, as it were. So another little tidbit is Elvis came here with the guys and Ricky Nelson and his guys came out here. And they thought, Ricky Nelson thought, well, we're just gonna have a friendly little game of football, but y'all know the Memphis Mafia. It wasn't friendly. All I could say is poor Ricky Nelson. Ricky Nelson got beat up here, friends, playing football. Believe that. And during the movie years, Elvis played here a lot as well. So friends, this is definitely the era that would have been a water fountain that those guys would have used. Elvis used this water fountain right here. So friends, this has been a fun look at the homes of Elvis in Los Angeles, California. He lived in Bel Air and Beverly Hills as well. And I hope you enjoyed it. Just remember, I will have another video out at some point of the Hillcrest house inside. We were able to get inside. I didn't include it here. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this. Make sure you subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Tighten up and subscribe right now.